So the device profiles are really what has been the way we, I guess guarantee is a good word in this case, because I think it is a guarantee, interoperability between devices. So it's really the cornerstone of, uh, of how these devices can interoperate. We've got these icons over in here that we've, uh, we've put together that are going to give us the ability for the consumer and the developers to share what products are compatible with what features. Um, we're going through some other processes that you'll hear later on in the week to help define this even further. So we have a full uh, receiver implementation in a simple, we have a full receiver implementation in a more complex. These devices are, the device profiles are based upon those pages that we saw earlier. So they're very easily upgradable and made more complex if need be, but always they go back down to the backwards compatible, back to the first device that was developed. So we develop the profiles, we generate them, uh, we ask for help. Um, there's working groups. Uh, we have a couple new profiles that I think we've been talking about some of us in, in uh, side conversations that um, we get the feedback from the, the, the people that use that type of a product. And they give us that information that they feel is really important. They fill out a questionnaire and we gather that data. Up. And then we release uh, an alpha to the device profile working group. So it's very much in that SIG you have, typically have a working group, but in that SIG environment, a special interest group like Bluetooth or Zigbee, you have, everybody votes. Um, we're benevolent dictators in this case. So um, we get everybody's input, we mass it up as best we think, we use the intelligence of our vision and our experience and send back this after release, which really gives everybody a chance to look at what everybody else said and is it the right thing? Once it becomes the right thing, then we can send a beta release out to the working group. That working group gets a chance to play with that, put it into product, it's productized, it's 100%, well, very close to 100% um, final production, and that gives you a six to, about six month head start on the, on the rest of the people. And then we'll release it into the general release about six months later. Okay, so a real simple process. Um, please, I, I would suggest that you, uh, if you've got something you think is really neat and it's not kind of fitting into a profile now, please bring that up while you're here. Uh, talk to Ross and, and some of the people in that group and they may uh, have a couple of other people that have done it also. We can start another working group. Um, I, I don't want to commit on his behalf, but they've done a tremendous good job of releasing a lot of device profiles this year. Um, compared to about a year and a half average from this special interest group. So it's a big value that you have with Ant is you can affect a change in product uses. You can't do that within a SIG. It really makes it a challenge. So we started off in uh, 2004 uh, by developing an application standard uh, uh, product chipset that is the basis of the heart straps and, uh, and the foot pods, or not, maybe not the foot pods, but the, the cycle sensors. And that made Ant Plus really easy to deploy on an interoperable basis. And we've been selling those since 2004. Um, so they cover, again, the, the three uh, icons that you see out there. Then we, uh, we took uh, cycling device profiles as the cycling world started to, to build. Um, Things like the power, um, everybody's been talking about that lately, cadence and speed. File transfer kind of came along, uh, AntFS, Ant File Share as we called it, or file system, depending on uh, who you're talking to. That was released in 2009, and that's that authentication process where your watch or your bike computer comes close to a PC that's got that application running, and they find each other, and they negotiate a relationship with each other, and once they're at a level of authentication, the data just transfers. There's no push button required. There's, it's ubiquitous, and that's really something that has made it easy for people to implement those new applications on their products without having to go through the year, year and a half worth of, of development that it took a couple of the other early members. Fitness hardware, um, since there's a few fitness people in the room, we created the Fit1E. Um, it's basically a module that takes into account the, the hardships of pairing in a, in a fitness club. You've got 40 uh, uh, treadmills in a, in a cardio class, all side by side. 
the fit one e has stopped the cross talking it, it it made it easy for the machines to talk specifically with the heart rate or the watch and, and, and that whole use case is solved by this device which really makes it easy for the fitness people but also the sensor people in here now your watches your bike computers all of that will be able to talk to fitness equipment and your market will expand quite nicely so there's the icon for the fitness health profiles again uh, blood pressure weight scale uh, weight scale has been around for a little while but blood pressure is just brand new um, and our friends at, at AMD have uh, commercialized products you'll see on display that you can you can buy that have got ant plus profiles built into them and we've got multiple vendors of these products so now you can add blood pressure and weight to a fitness training environment some of the scales do body mass uh, some of them do hydration um, that's good information if you're a training athlete that information wasn't available until 2010 so we we'll continue to add those things that work really really well and blood glucose is coming along um, those of you that uh, have diabetes in your family um, type 2 diabetes is prevalent in the United States it's a shame that it has to be that way but there's a lot of people pricking a lot of fingers and that data can easily help people either trend their activity, their diet a bit better. So we see a huge value for anybody out there implementing a sport fitness um, display to think about putting these in there also as device profiles. Because it doesn't have to be hardware. It's the same hardware you have now. It's just a little bit more tight. For those of you that are the software people, I apologize. <laughs> and now it's just uh, cut and paste. Before you have to take, now you just have to cut and paste. So, and then the fit file system was a, a new one that's released. This is actually released outside of Ant Plus on our general website. So you can download this. It's a full file structure that allows you to be able to decode files coming from watches, bike computers. It's the communication that's used to the fitness computer. Um, you know, it's a really, really robust platform. If you're planning on collecting a lot of data, storing it and then sending it at a later time. This compacts the data tremendously. You'll hear a lot more about this in the coming weeks, so I won't start talking too much about the technical. And, ta-da, we signed our 300th member. Pretty hot. There's 300 people out there that decided that they wanted to be part of this organization. I give, you, give yourselves all a pat in the back for joining something that's really, really successful. So this is what the ecosystem tends to look like. And you'll see these if you go to any of the trade shows that we attend. You've got your pans, you've got your weights, you've got you know, the uh, um, uh, elderly population you're trying to monitor. You can even use Ant for, for monitoring in your house. It's very easy to do. It's maybe not Ant Plus yet, but as we get more people with more expertise into that, it could be added. So all of these are things that we feel Ant is very capable of doing. So if you have any plans in any of these areas that aren't AMP Plus yet, please let us know. So here's some, some statistics. I know when you go back and you're talking to your team or your boss or whatever, they're going to say, well, how did this AMP thing? What did you learn? And, well, you learn that we're successful, first of all, because in this case here, we've got 90% of that marketplace is AMP. So we've got AMP private. So Sunto as a company is an ant private uh, person, so they're still using our technology. This is all ant plus over here, and there's 10% there's over there. That's the rest of the world. So in the heart rate side of things, the digital heart rate, ant is the predominant number. So you've made the right decision. And then in this case here, we have 66%, two thirds of that market space. So this is your bike power and speed. So that's a, that's a pretty strong position for us to be in, or you to be in, I should say. And then digital running, there's been a lot of digital running products out there, but we still have the majority of 55%. Very proud of that. So congratulations to everybody that's made running products and with Ant Plus. So now we're, uh, we're starting to look at some of the bridging things that you can do to get into other medias that you may not have uh, on, your, on your site right now. So Ant and PC, you take all of those device profiles and we put them through a, a commercially available product. Um, it's available from our distributors. Um, it works really well. It's the, the, the new NRF24 AP2 based uh, USB 2. So that's all the new features that we've, we've brought out, or the Nordic has brought out. So your proximity, uh, your search, new search mechanisms, the eight channel capability, that's currently shipping in volume. 
And it, uh, it just basically goes right into the PC. It's a little blurry. It's an old PC, so it's an old picture. So in embedded design, for those of you that are in the process of uh, defining a product, you're going to be making something that is going to be embedded. It's going to have a circuit board, basically. We, we suggest that you give that one a try. That's, uh, that's our little FCC, CE, IC, uh, Japan, Australia, New Zealand uh, specified device. And it basically does the same thing. It talks into a, another hardware platform. In this case here, this is specifically the Seiko Epson uh, C17 development platform that has a socket that you can plug this right onto. So if you're making a display, you know, this is one of the device manufacturers from the CPU side of things that have chosen to put a lot of weight behind it also. So the module gives you all of the benefits of no design, great performance, uh, quick to market. It's a surface mount or, or a, a socketed base one for a development platform. And that'll get you into, uh, into volume probably in, I think our lead time is now two to four weeks for volume of 10,000 or so. So um, it's, a, it's a viable solution. And there's more to come. There's a whole family of these plans. So, and I think you'll hear a bit more of them later on in the week. So again, Anton Embedded Designs, same device profiles. We can go to a chip. If you feel from a price point or from a size point of view um, that you need to have a, a, a much smaller design, Nordic Semiconductor has this family of products available. Uh, they're in the room now. There's all sorts of great people around here. They've been with us for a lot of years, and they're going to really make a, a, a good effort to get you successful. They do design service uh, uh, interpretation, so they'll take your layout and make sure it's RF uh, viable. And then that same thing can work with uh, an embedded platform like the Seiko Epson or So, and I'm sure they'll tell you later on this week, there's a lot more to come.